like this, then essentially it will turn, try to turn the element in an anti-clockwise direction. So number one, anti-clockwise direction. Number two, Vx upwards. And number three, left portion of B. Right. So if these three are satisfied, then I will say that this is having a negative value of the shear force. So, this is my sign convention pertaining to the shear force. The next thing is, we will study the sign convention pertaining to the bending moment. Right. Now essentially, we know that if we consider the left portion of the beam, then if the bending moment is anti-clockwise, we consider it to be like this. For example, I have an element O and the bending moment is anti-clockwise on the right side of O. And the resultant moment is obviously clockwise because the bending moment is equal and opposite to this resultant moment. So the resultant moment is clockwise and to the left of O. And essentially what this 2 does is that it changes the shape of the element like and the element becomes like this. Wherein the top fibers will be under some sort of a compressive force and the bottom fibers will be under some sort of a tensile force. And when this happens, we call it a kind of sagging bending moment or positive. Right. And the same thing, again is I will repeat here, this we will take only when we consider the left portion of the beam. If we consider the, left, the right portion of the beam, for example this, then the bending moment, if, it's, if it acts in this direction, then essentially I will say this is PA by L and this is suppose P. And if this bending moment has to act in this direction, so if I have an element here, then essentially this bending moment, this is when I am considering the right portion of the beam. And the resultant moment will act in this direction. So essentially it will create again a kind of sagging moment with the top fibers in compression and the bottom fibers in tension. So essentially this will be my positive then. So if we consider the right portion of the beam, then the, if the bending moment is clockwise, we consider a positive bending moment. If we consider the left portion of the beam, which we consider in most of the cases, and the bending moment is anti-clockwise, we, we say that it is a sagging moment or a positive bending moment. Right. Again, if I consider the left portion of the beam and the bending moment is some sort of a clockwise bending moment and the resultant moment is anti-clockwise of course, then this element will have a change of shape and it will be like this, wherein the top fibers will be under some sort of a tensile force and the bottom fibers will be under some sort of a compressive force. So essentially then, we will say that the element will be under hogging moment. And this hogging moment will obviously be negative. And if we consider the right portion of the beam, then essentially uh, the bending moment will be like this. So this is my bending moment. This is my resultant moment. Right. And uh, this will have a, the, this, I think I've done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Bending moment. Yeah. The bending, if you consider the right portion of the beam, then essentially it will look like this. And if it looks like this, therefore, I'm sure this will be a hogging moment and therefore it will be negative. So, if this if we consider the right portion of the beam, this if we consider the left portion of the beam. So, brief synopsis is like this. We have the shear force and the bending moment, right? We have the shear force, we have the bending moment as the internal forces. Now, if we consider the left portion of the beam, then if the shear force is in a downward direction and if the bending moment is in an anti-clockwise direction, then we consider it a positive shear force or a positive bending moment and essentially positive bending moment means a sagging bending moment. So again I repeat, if I have the left portion of the beam and I suppose that the positive value of shear force is in the downward direction and the positive value of the bending moment is in the anti-clockwise direction. If this two are there, then I suppose that it will have a positive shear force and a sagging bending moment. Now if I consider the left portion of the beam and the shear force in, is in an upward direction and the bending moment is in a clockwise direction, then essentially I have negative value of shear force and negative bending moment. Now if I consider the right portion of the beam, things are just reversed. Then 
what happens is that if I have a upward direction of the shear force and a clockwise bending moment, if I consider the right portion, if I have an upward value of shear force and a clockwise bending moment, then essentially it is sagging bending moment and positive shear force as we have seen. And if we have some kind of a downward shear force and a anti-clockwise bending moment, then essentially it will be a hogging moment in the case if we consider the right portion of the beam. So this is all about sign conventions and in the next lecture what I'll try to do basically is introduce the concept of shear force and bending moment diagram. Now the shear force and the bending moment diagram are nothing but it gives an idea to where, what is the magnitude of the shear force at every cross section of the beam and how does this magnitude change? How does it change with from positive shear force to negative shear force or the magnitude itself, the shear force magnitude changes, how is the function, it, whether it's a linear function, whether it's a parabolic function, whether it's a constant function and also the same thing will be seen for bending moment. Bending moment diagrams essentially gives us a representation of the bending moment at different cross section of the beam and this too we will study in greater detail in the next lecture. See you then.